Okay, good morning. Here we are again. Um, this video, we're going to focus on a Gaussian distribution of random numbers. Now, why is this something that matters to us? Uh, okay, so we were looking at the random walker. And that random walker made its little random movements all around the, uh, around the window. And we even began to kind of take a little step with that and say, ah, we could kind of adjust probabilities. Instead of it having an equal probability of going in any direction at any moment, we could say it's going to be more likely to go to the right or more likely to go up or less likely to go down. We could start to control. We could get control over the randomness in our life. Right? Control. That's our goal here. But really, what our, uh, one of the things that I want to say in this sort of section before we get into the real motion and physics stuff we're going to do in this video series is um, eliminate, eliminate randomness from your life. Uh, not forever, but as an exercise to yourself, randomness might have been a bit of a crutch to you. Maybe, maybe you just you, you learned how to draw stuff in processing. You learned how to move things around the screen. You said, ah, I don't know. It needs to be more dynamic. Let's just make it all random. Random colors, random shapes, random positions, random speeds. What we're doing here is saying, um, is there a more thoughtful approach we can take? How can we um, get control over randomness so we can control the distribution of random numbers we get? Or how can we create algorithms to generate numbers in such a way that we have a more organic set of random numbers? Gaussian, Perlin noise, we're going to look at um, a way of customizing distribution of random numbers with the Monte Carlo scenario. So we're going to look at a few different things just as kind of, again, we're just getting started here, getting used to back into using processing if you haven't for a while before we get into the real motion stuff. So Gaussian distributions of random numbers. So before I started this video, I drew this little meerkat. I, I, spent, I only spent about 45 minutes on it, but, and I can't draw, so this I think is pretty good. But um, the, a meerkat scenario came up in a previous video. Let's say we're trying to make a population of meerkats. So that's our simulation, and we need heights for them. So we say float h equals random 100 comma 200. I'm picking a random number between 100 and 200. That's going to be my height. Well, what's going to happen? I actually have an example here that I want to run. And what this example is doing is it's picking a random number associated with an x position on the screen. And every time it picks it, it the, the um, rectangle starts growing up. And you can find this example. It's uh, introduction uh, example number two, random distribution. So these numbers are go these 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 bars are going up and up. You can see we have an even distribution of random numbers. There's randomness built in there, but we're getting uh, this. If we if we think about this now in terms uh, in terms of the meerkat, that means if we were to graph all of the meerkat's heights from 100 to 200, if we picked random numbers, a perfect random number generator over an infinite amount of time, we'd get this graph. But this, as we stated before, is perhaps not how it is in nature. <laughs> there aren't, there are probably, actually I don't, again, I don't know anything about meerkats, but if you look at human beings, there's, you know, most people are about the same average height, and there's some people that are taller, some people that are shorter, very few people that are really tall, very few people that are really short. There is a normal distribution of heights. That word normal, also we use the word Gaussian for the mathematician. Um, this is a distribution of random numbers that we find often in nature or in test taking, apparently. The bell curve, you might have heard of that. There will be, this, will, this will be on the test. There will be no test. Should there be a test? Maybe there should be a test. I don't know why I drew that as dotted lines. So this is what that graph looks like. We want a lot of meerkats that have a height around the average, otherwise known as the mean. And then very few outliers, but some. There's still always a chance. So how do we rewrite this code? Well, one thing we have to do is we have to, at the top of our code, import a class. And actually, we might add Gaussian random numbers into processing, which, just for, um, which I think would make sense. But uh, for right now, you have to import this random class. It comes from Java. Once you import that class, you can declare a random object. I'm going to call it a generator, gen for short, a random number generator. And with, as with any object, we've got to initialize it as a new random, a new object. This generator is now responsible for our random numbers. So instead of saying float h, give us a random number, we can say float h equals gen dot next Gaussian. Now, let's actually put this into a, let's make a little simple sketch for ourselves and let's put this in and see how far we get. OK, now I'm going to make a new processing sketch. This is fun, live typing. And we're going to import java.util.random. This laptop is on a pile of books. It's very unstable. I need a laptop stand. <laughs> OK. And 
uh, we're going to declare a random generator and uh, make a si window size. Oh boy, this is very hard to type. I'm going to have to fix this setup. Uh, and uh, here we go. Background 255. So I don't know. Let's pick. Let's see. Let's let's say float h equals generator dot next Gaussian. And I don't know. Let's just to see what this does. Let's tie this to the size of a circle that we'll put in the middle of the window. Ah, I'm going to save this as something somewhere. OK, uh, I, don't, I don't have a system for this yet. Uh, Gaussian test. Sorry, OK, so this will be, oh, I'm standing in front of it the whole time. I, I knew I was forgetting something. Oh, this is terrible. This video was going so well, I thought. But OK, so I'm just going to move this over. Fancy, our fancy system failed us. OK, so you can see I typed in some basic stuff. Now this gives me, I like, when I lean against the wall here, it gives me this like chill scratch, like nails on the chalkboard. OK, I can, I can get that out of my system. OK, so, ah, so this didn't work. Cannot convert from double to float. So this is a little bit of an unfortunate thing, which is that the um, Java class gives us a double instead of a float. So I'm just going to convert this to a float really quickly and then run this. And it says, ah, uh, it doesn't want to do that for a double because processing doesn't really have anything to do with doubles. So <laughs> here we go. So I'm just going to change that to the casting syntax. And now we've got it. OK, oh, I see a little dot up there. So what did we get? Is that a normal distribution? They all seem the same. It's the same. It's drawing it over and over again. Is it random? Is it not random? Hmm, what's going on? OK, so the thing that we have to understand is what are the numbers that come out of this function? Well. We did, ah, uh, I got to, uh, shoot, I'm over here. The thing we got to remember is what are the numbers that come out of this function? Um, OK, so they, here we gave ourselves a range between 100 and 200. We didn't give a range here. What this does is it gives us a Gaussian random number with a mean equal to 0 and a standard deviation equal to 1. Now, mean we may perhaps we understand already. Mean is the average. Right? This is that, that center. Maybe we want our average to be 150. That's our average height that we want. Um, but what does standard deviation mean? Now, we could go through some formulas, and we could look at how we calculate standard deviation. Standard deviation, we take all of the heights. We, we get the difference of the heights from the average. We square those. We take the average of all the squares. Then we take the square root of that, and, and that's our uh, standard deviation, blah, blah, blah. So, but uh, I'm going to give you some resources to, uh, if you can look in the um, Nature of Code introduction chapter, um, it goes through how to actually calculate standard deviation. But for us right now, what I want is just get sort of the feeling of standard deviation, because we can just kind of play with it in our code and see what kind of results we get. Um, so, what is the feeling? <laughs> what, is, what does standard deviation feel like to, to you? Here's what it feels like to me. Let's draw that bell curve a number of different ways. I don't know. That's probably pretty good. We can see this graph has a very small standard deviation because just about everything clusters around the mean and nothing um, varies from the mean very much. These, there are a lot of elements vary from the mean. A lot of elements vary from the mean. A lot of el more elements vary from the mean. When you have a large standard deviation, you have a lot of tall and short meerkats. When you have a tiny standard deviation, you don't have very many tall and short ones. You just got a lot of average ones. So we can use this number to play around with how, how much we're spreading out from that mean. How random are we really getting? How much more are we clustering around that mean? So how do we adjust for that? Well, if, um, so, okay, so if this gives us a mean and standard deviation of 1, we can always adjust by saying h equals h plus what we want our mean to be. Um, right? So we can always say if the mean is 0, but we want everything to cluster around 150, we can just add 150 to every single element. Now, if we want to spread or shrink this standard deviation, spread it out or shrink it, what we should do before that is we should multiply by our own, I'm going to make a variable called STDDEV, standard deviation. So once we get this Gaussian random number out of processing with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, first we stretch it 
or compress it by adjusting the standard deviation by multiplying, and then we shift the whole graph over by adding the mean to it. Um, if this is confusing to you, which maybe it is, you can think of it this in steps. So let's look at this, this sort of graph. And this is 0, and maybe, maybe it gave us this. So first what we do is we take, and this is our get Gaussian random numbers. First what we do is multiply. Let's say our standard deviation is 2, and our, uh, aver our average is 100. So first we multiply every number here by 2. And what we get is a slightly wider graph. We just multiplied it so this number, this is, it just pulls out because everything's multiplied by 2. Then what we do is we add 100 to it. So adding 100 to every number, we just shifted it over. I kind of widened it as well so that the average is around 100. So this is the process. We can get that Gaussian random number out, stretch it, move it, adjust the standard deviation, adjust the mean. Let's go take a look at this now in our example. Um, if I walk back here, I can say h equals, a, equals h times, I'm going to have a standard deviation of 10, and I can say uh, h equals h plus 100, so the mean is 100. And we can see here we're getting some random height, random sizes. But this is very different than just randomness. You can see they're kind of clustering around one value. Um, uh, just, to, just to pull up another example of this, uh, which I want to grab from the introduction uh, here. Um, so this example is, <laughs> of course, I uh, forgot to have the import statement in here. This example is picking a x location with every frame. And you can see it's then layering those over top of each other. And it gets darker and darker around the center. But you see the outliers, they all do get picked every once in a while. And if we look at this, if we go into the code. I can't use this computer today. Um, we can see that here we have a, a mean of the middle of the screen and the standard deviation of 60. So if I were to change that standard deviation to 120, we now see we're getting, we're getting more and more outliers getting picked. If I change that standard deviation to 10, then everything's really getting picked right around the center. So you know that could be a variable. It could stretch, shrink. There's lots that you could do with that. So, um, so I, I think we're wrapping this up. This is actually a 12-minute video, which is a little bit longer than I imagined. But this is a bit of a tool. And you can try to think about, so where could you apply this? For one, maybe uh, think about making a design for a face and uh, use Gaussian distributions to design all those elements. So the, the, the nose, the size, the position. How could you make random faces but all kind of uh, appear within this sort of, with, with a Gaussian distribution of values? Another thing you might look is at the, random, at the random walker. Is there a way you could use a Gaussian distribution of random numbers to pick how a random walker moves around the screen? And what would that sort of visual result look like? So, um, Try to, try to look for something where you used random in your code. And instead of using random, use Gaussian. Maybe uh, w another thing that just occurred to me is you could think of, uh, if I were to splatter paint here onto the wall, would most of the paint spots splatter in the center? And then there'd be some outliers. Could you use Gaussian random numbers for that? And that didn't just occur to me. I thought of that beforehand. But anyway, it occurred to me now to think of it to say that. OK, so this video was a bit longer than I'd hoped. And it was not nearly as good as I'd hoped. But I'm just making them. And someday I'm going to uh, remake these, and maybe you're going to email me and tell me you should really remake it. OK, uh, I'm going to um, press a button, and it's going to stop now. OK, uh, here we go.